biologicals. There are also antibodies which tackle the receptors of the cell in different diseases. And small molecules in different cancer, we use them, which can block the VEGF receptor, the PTGFR receptor, and sometimes seen other types seen kinase receptors with improvement in overall survivals. And when they look at them, compare them, and they get license from the FDA after they meeting the old generation drugs. You can see from 15 months to 27 months for this molecule for kidney cancer. For leukemias, with the translocation of the chromosome 921, we get chronic myelogenous leukemia. And with the new molecule which come up here, imagine it, uh, we can shut down the leukemic process. People, uh, they come up to us with high counts. Next week, their counts are back to normal. You cannot tell this guy has leukemia or not. Back to normal. And the Cancer Ma Time magazine, it was awesome for that magic bullet. But the patient needs to continue on it. Give you other flavor of what we are doing to our cancer patients, cryotherapy for localized tumors, such as the prostate, skin tumors, and metastatic tumors. We freeze the nodule with the cancer where it is, up to minus 80 centigrade thermal temperature, but it is some sort of palliative treatment and localized. We need to put needle in each nodule of the liver or whatever, wherever is the cancer. And some propaganda on Facebook that there is a Chinese hospital which they say it's the end of the era of cancer. No more cancer. If you go to this hospital, you'll be cured. And they are using this freezing technique in stage four. If the patient had 100 spots, they need to freeze every bit of his body, which is nonsense. We go back to our father of medicine, Hippocrates, who said, what can't be cured with medicine can be cured with surgery. What cannot be cured with surgery can be cured with heat. And what the National Cancer Institute, our guideline uh, there, they said, what is hyperthermia? Hyperthermia is a type of cancer treatment in which body tissue is exposed to high temperature. Research has shown the high temperature can damage and kill cancer cells, usually with minimal injury to normal cells. How we can deliver heat? It's not just putting uh, some local heat outside. We need to do heat deep inside the tissues. We heat, we heat through magnetic field, ultrasound waves, and electrical currents. The German proposed this technology, which is called Oncotherm, where, whereby there is electrical field which pass through the tumor, through the body, and will be a closed circuit where the tumor is here in the lung and exposed to radio frequency and here in the liver. And there are some results actually, but we're talking about localized space. We're not, cancer is a systemic process. When we see a point, this is, doesn't mean that the cancer is there. There are cells in the rest of the body. It's a systemic disease. And when we apply this uh, electrical current in mice, it works. You see the malignant fibroblasts, they are gone. And the heat process, it heats more the malignant cell because it has more electrolytes on the surface, more than the dormant cells. As you can see, some results where we use this technique here in Jordan, in head of pancreas, there was big tumor when we started and the tumor was almost gone. This is metastatic also, the liver back to normal. Here with heat only, without chemotherapy, because the patient was renal failure, elderly, could not just apply heat, and the, the lymphoma subsided. And the brain, we cannot deliver more radiation to the brain, only sealing those. After that, we can use the heat, and we get good results with heat alone. 
as you can see here also from the effect of the thermal therapy. For instance, here lymphoma, you cannot give radiation to the eye. So with this heat technique, we delivered good result. But unfortunately, years later, it recurred, but it doesn't recur in the field, it recurred around surrounding the field. Now, the Time magazine, how to cure cancer? Is there a way? They answered yes. And hopefully, our first steps nowadays, we are seeing the results. I'm glad to say that. And the current approaches for treatment of cancer, as I mentioned to you, that chemotherapy, the old age, now dwindling with low response, non-durable response, treatment toxicity. This guy, he is maybe the father of the immune therapy. He's called Cooley. He's William Cooley from New York. He noticed that women with breast cancer who got infection after their surgery did fare better than women did not get infection. So he thought maybe the immune system in these infected women beat the cancer. So he, he took out some erysipelas uh, bacteria, strep, and he started injecting it into women with breast cancer. He got one lady who was pure, that, that was reportable, one cure. And Cooley was not wrong, just had far ahead of his time. Now, looking at the immune cells our, in our body at the cancer, we know from our pathologists that when they look at tumors and they see lymphocytes infiltration, the, infiltrating the tumors, these patients with such tumors, they have less advanced stage. They have absent of metastasis. They have increased survival and reduced risk of relapse. At the same time, we know that our patients who are on immunosuppressive drugs, AIDS patients, congenital uh, immune uh, diseases, all of them, they develop cancer. So there must be a problem with our immune system. We know that our cells secrete proteins and the tumor cells secrete proteins. So, the antigen are released by the tumor cells and captured by the dendritic cells. They have their, this hairy projections, the dendritic cells. They took the protein and go to the lymphic glands where they start heating up the lymphocytes, the naive lymphocytes, they start activating them according to the foreign proteins from the tumor. And the activated T lymphocytes, they get back to attack the tumor. This is the theory. And what's happening, if we activate the T lymphocytes more, we get bad results because they will attack our body and we get into immune diseases. So there are checkpoints. Check, one of these checkpoints is called uh, cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4 checkpoint. And there is a new pathway which is called program cell death checkpoint. They prevent the cell from further activation and killing the T lymphocytes. So, what the science people had done, they looked at the tumor ligands which binds to the program cell death pathway and inhibit the pathway so that the, our immune system is just feeling the tumor cell are not attacking it. So uh, this is what's happening. The ligand and the program cell death receptor are in harmony and there is no attack. What happened in the industry, they came up with the first uh, pembrolizumab, which is a monoclonal antibody, uh, which is anti-PD-1 antibody. And the first study was among patients with uh, malignant melanoma, which is the most severe, worst sort of cancer. And the Ketruda will activate the cytotoxic T cell from uh, coming to the ligand which abort its action. So, the tumor cell now with the drug is attacked by the T lymphocytes with excellent results. As you can see, this is the pioneer work. 
Within three months, this patient with a malignant melanoma, with lymph gland, positive lymph gland, healed completely. The, th the good thing about it, I was among scientists uh, like one month ago in the meeting of the cancer so European Cancer Society. And the good thing that these drugs harness the immune system so that not like chemotherapy, you need to give more and more. The, chemo the immune system will take the way, lead the way to get back to normal to attack the cancer. You don't need to continue with the drugs. And this is the success story. You don't need to continue. So the last thing, the immune, the immune therapy, the immune therapy gets us to heal. The targeted therapy, it dwindles with time. What we are now we, in the era of combining immune therapy, we have two drugs on the market registered by the FDA, and we are getting into here. Chemotherapy, people die. Now we are getting into here. We hope to get into 100% response. This is the results of combination of immune therapy. And this is the era of attack. And you can see now the whole media is talking about all diseases. Lung cancer, the drug is beating the old generation. In uh, brain tumor, the drug is beating the old generation. In Hodgkin lymphoma, it's beating all its 2020-15 literature. We are doing great in oncology. I thank for the help of the pharmacists who lead us to be in good shape in front of our patients. And thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Marwan, for your nice uh, lecture. As we haven't much time, uh, if, if someone he has or she has uh, questions, uh, please, uh, uh, you can contact Dr. Marwan during the lunch time. Please, we go now, we are going to the last, thank you, Dr. Marwan, to the last uh, speaker, uh, Professor Giancarlo Cravatto. It's my pleasure to present Professor Giancarlo Cravotto from Italy, as I'm graduated from Italy, Benvenuto in Jordania. Uh, he is a professor at the University of Torino in Italy, uh, and uh, uh, Professor Giancarlo, uh, his research activity has been centered on natural products structure, purification, synthesis, and chemical modification. He published more than 280 scientific peer-reviewed papers, 20 chapters, 15 international and national patents, and over 300 communications to scientific meetings, including several invited plenary and coordinated lectures. Welcome. He will present the following lecture title key enabling technologies in the drug synthesis, extraction, and processing. Okay, so thank you very much for your kind introduction. I am uh, really thankful. I would like to absolutely warmly thank the organizer for a very nice meeting and the atmosphere and uh, the international aspect that we can see here and, uh, and all the, the absolutely uh, uh, so all the aspects of innovation uh, that were in the aim of the meeting are surely uh, already described. Well, I'm coming from Turin. You see we are close to France, close to the Alps. This is our university, one of the oldest universities in Europe. And uh, I'm showing you just a couple of photos of our department. And here, uh, the topic that are uh, studied in our department. So, we move to technology. To it. We are very, very close to several big industries. 
uh, not only in Europe, in, in Europe but in, uh, in Asia and the United States. We are developing with the engineers, with the chemists, biologists, biotechnology, several technology, as you see, mainly for process innovation and uh, intensification. We are, we can say, expert in the field of microwaves, uh, cavitational turbines, uh, ultrasound, and different type of reactor, micro-reactor, meso-reactor, to activate the process. So chemical process, synthesis, extraction, and so on. Why? Why to be competitive? To, be, to, to move to greener process, to move to more efficient procedure. Of course, it is absolutely impossible to compare different technology because each one works in a different condition, in a better, uh, I would say, uh, uh, range of temperature, range of pressure, range of uh, uh, general conditions that make practically impossible to compare one chemical reaction performed in microwave and one main chemical reaction performed in ultrasound uh, because one work at room temperature, the other work under heating. So which is the best way to perform uh, a synthesis of a drug or an extraction for a plant? Chemists, biologists and people, in particular people from the industry or the production industry are extremely conservative. So you still see now uh, how the reactions are performed. You see more or less as uh, 20 years ago or even more. And uh, innovation requires time. And even if you can produce, you can work uh, with a more efficient process, more selective, faster, easier, with the uh, respecting green chemistry and the cleaner procedure and also with energy saving uh, to move uh, and, and to think outside the box is often something extremely difficult even with the proof so it's extremely easy and uh, challenging and, 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 and of course part of our work in the university but at the, in the industry, it takes time. So these are the, uh, the milestones on, in, required to develop a new process with a totally different technology. We, we have some patent and, and of course also publication. We reach uh, the industrial level moving in, in condition from, for instance, from extremely diluted solution to solvent-free process, for instance, with mechanochemistry, or process using uh, supercritical carbon dioxide uh, uh, instead of uh, classical solvent. Of course, from the lab, from the discovery, from the pilot scale. Normally, the weaker point is the pilot scale, because the gap between lab procedure, lab methodology to industrial level is huge. So from, uh, we work a lot with pilot reactor in the lab. Of course, this pilot reactor in a bigger scale has to be in the industry and of course moving to big industry. This is the BSF in Germany. Of course, is something that sometimes is like to cross a big mountain. What happened in Europe in the last 20 years? We invest a lot of money in basic research. You see the last column on the right. And now the European Commission, now I mean uh, in the last two, three years with a new program that is Horizon 2020, of course move in another direction because if you see the investment in basic research and in the applied research is totally different in the Eastern country, in the United States, in Japan and so on. So now a big effort is now running with the CAT. The CATs are strategic to Europe, are enabling technologies that can of course open new way to, to think and to imagine to work and to 
uh, produce a new drug, a new fine chemical in the industry. Just a, a couple of slides to show uh, some of uh, European projects running in our laboratory. One is a NAPSI, with the, so the end user is a DSM, is a big company worldwide. And of course, we, we prepare new catalysts, new green catalysts, solid supported catalysts to, to, for the application and the synthesis of vitamins, exploiting microwave and ultrasound. Extremely active without lead. Here you see one recent publication describing our work. A second project just approved, we are the scientific coordinators of uh, this project titled Combining Ultrasonic with Enzyme Treatment. So how you can make in a synergistical way two technology apparently far away, so enzyme and ultrasound, uh, but we show, we have evidence that it both can act in a very uh, synergistic way and you can enhance and you can of course recover from bio-waste uh, new sugar-based biotechnological uh, product of uh, high industrial interest. Another important project now is in the end uh, is uh, uh, eco-extraction. Mainly we were involved from Northwest Italy, Turin and, and the, the, the border universities and industries of France. So uh, we exploit their supercritical carbon dioxide. You see here little scale, in a big we have also pilot reactor, you see here, myself, I like to, to, to test directly some process. Of course, we can also extract from, one typical example is the extraction of lycopene from tomatoes or hotels, ex, ex, uh, without any coarse solvent, but using some oil from some oleaginous plant that, we, that can be added and can, of course, give you a very a a, a solution extremely concentrated of, uh, you see, of lycopene, just an example. Uh, you see here, all our project um, applications are also existing in a, in a big scale. This big scale is shown here for supercritical carbon dioxide, the Italian plant of Lavazza that uh, for the decoffination uh, of coffee, in, a, in a close to this area, you see 32 ton of material per day. So it's a, something that is existing. So the use of the Bhutan reactor, when you have a very sensitive compound that has to be extracted with several double bond, uh, you can imagine like IPA, DHA, or many other compounds that you cannot evaporate then the solvent. So butane is a very cheap, is very rapid, very efficient. You see here the extraction. And also in this case, butane is existing in a bigger scale. Of course, you can then, you work at, at practically close to room temperature and at very low pressure. Very, very simple. Solvent. Solvent is another critical point. You see how the, the industry is, uh, is starting from a huge amount of solvent of production, but you have to consider that the pharmaceutical industry is the one that produces the highest amount of waste per kilo of final product. It's in between from 5 to 100 kilo per kilo of product of waste because the high added value of the, the final product. So, well, we are using different type of solvent uh, like a certain kind of ionic liquid, polymers, fluorosolvent, super subcritical water, or water with natural surfactant, of course, used and exploited in the presence of uh, ultrasound or, or hydrodynamic cavitation system. The use of uh, deep eutectic solvent changed completely the way to intend the use of uh, the classical organic solvent. Of course, again here, the integration of uh, technology, of uh, new solvent, enzymatic degradation, mechanical treatment, and all, all this process, all this technology together, 
enable a, an impressive reduction of energy consumption and reduction of uh, environmental impact. Uh, another Mediterranean example that is uh, uh, the lease of, uh, of uh, uh, olive plant uh, extracted by ultrasound, by microwave with a, a flow of steam, vapor, or a after a mechanical treatment. So all, all the systems are tested in lab scale and of course then scaled up with the other system. We are using often cyclodextrin, beta cyclodextrin or any other de derivative of cyclodextrin to act also as, as a protective uh, to protect some, some compound more sensitive or, or of course they are green, intrinsically safe, they can be used in food industry as well as in the pharmaceutical industry and you can act, they can act, they can promote the extraction at the same, the same time they can also be useful to, uh, um, to help also in the catalysis and in the selectivity of the reaction. Microwaves is considered one of the top 10 technology developed in the last century. Uh, you see here the, the inventor, the first oven, very big, it was more than 300 kilo, uh, very, very high, 1 meter 90. And of course, everybody knows the use of microwave in the kitchen since the, it's a, more or less now close to 50 years, half century. Often people think, oh, if, I, if I'm using microwave, typically sugar derivatives or like uh, cyclodextrin are burned, are destroyed, is not the case. So microwave has a huge impact also for the industrial production uh, in many fields, plastic, pharma, uh, in particular for food, for, for, for drug development, drug <laughs> discovery. Uh, this is one of our reviews that receive a, a huge amount of citation only to show the interest in such field. Safety are extremely safe. You can work with at high pressure, with very fast reaction in a very efficient way without any kind of risk. So microwaves are not dangerous. The literature is full of information, is full of details, so you can work no more with the Thomson Brenner, but of course with this type of reactor that replace the power or replace all the other reactors because you can reach very high pressure. These are more or less all our reactors in our laboratory in Turin. We can work in flow. In particular, with some reactor in flow, we can really produce huge amounts of multigram scale in our lab. It's a picture in our lab. And selectivity, of course, microwave are volumetric but extremely selective. Of course, the new type of reactor enable an homogeneous heating to avoid degradation or inhomogeneous reaction. In this case, you see a, an Archimedean screw that, uh, that turns inside of the oven or the rotate, rotative system. In this way, you can prepare a coating on your system. Uh, in the industry, also even available big uh, rotating system in which you can prepare uh, the covers or the coating for tablets or, or to cover uh, your pills in some way. So extremely efficient, fast and rapid ahead, nothing more here. Uh, easy to scale it up from few milli milliliter up to one liter to move in a bigger scale and a very high temperature, pressure, but of course the time is one order of magnitude shorter, so very fast. Decoration of molecules, you see here, we could prepare very big molecules, very big platform for as a contrast agent uh, carrier uh, with a very high yield, otherwise impossible with any other technology. Catalyst preparation, a lot of material. We, we, we grafted carbon nanotubes, uh, we purify carbon nanotubes in microwave. You see here, silica, uh, fabric, we grafted with cyclodextrin, and of course such cyclodextrin are loaded then with a, with a drug, 
and you see silica, uh, graphene, uh, and uh, uh, cotton, this goes also fabric that can be loaded in this way. The working flow combining ultrasound, you see here on the top here, ultrasound, uh, in flow, uh, high shell mixer, hydrodynamic cavitation, and microwave, you reduce in second or perhaps in minutes the reaction time that normally require hours. Of course, it's, it's, uh, you see here the flow reactor combined with the other technology actually is optimized heat and mass transfer. Uh, look at uh, the title of this review, a microwave-based chemical factory in the lab is the miniaturization of an industry in a little scale, but you can produce with such system 100, 200 liters per day of biodiesel, just to make an example, a very simple reaction at a very high conversion. Microwave in the extraction, you see, you can extract uh, food, you can extract, uh, you can obtain essential oil in a very fast way, you can work in pressure, high temperature, fast fight filtration in order to isolate. And moving in a bigger scale, microwave to extract plant, 75 a liter, you can extract directly in, in, a, in a solvent or even in oil. The, Cosmetic industry use a lot of this type of reactor to extract directly in oil, and this oil then are used to prepare cream or any kind of uh, cosmetic. You see here the plant to collect essential oil. The last one is mechano mechanochemistry that now is used in lab, you see here, but also you can perform reaction, now the video is not working, but it's extremely efficient. Only the red ball has a very high energy. So this means that it's extremely regular and you, you, you fill with your reacting powder, your reacting uh, substrate and reagent and solvent to perform in a very, very fast way efficient reaction. Or complexation. To prepare a complex, you see here the vehiculation of a, a colic acid or cholesterol and so on. So, of course, this is in our lab, big scale, 5 liters, in order to prepare multigram of derivative for the industry, for the testing. You see here the big scale. And the cavitation. I think that in, in, in one lab of pharmaceutical chemistry, you cannot imagine to, to not use, to not exploit ultrasound. Ultrasound creates a unique uh, uh, environment a hot spot with the implosion of the bubble and cavitation uh, are really unique and extremely environmental friendly and efficient. Different type of reactor, again here in flow, we are very very well equipped and of course also here and all the parameters, what is the industry is looking for is the, the, the measurement of all the parameters, as, as you can see all the parameter is a flow reactor with a multi-horn flow, working in flow, and all the parameter, frequency, power, and so on, temperature, are strictly monitored to be repeatable. We measure cavitation, it's important. You cannot compare, you see, the cleaning bath is point, uh, 5.9, it's nothing to compare 60, or it's one order of magnitude in a much more powerful system. So, it is not say only ultrasound on or off, but is the, the power of the cavitation. And then the industry. This is a plant working in the industry. And the last type of reactor that can work also for plant extraction is a rotating system that generates cavitation and you can work in flow in very big scale. Another extremely innovative turbine is, you, have, you see here a picture, uh, work is like an engine of, a, of an aircraft. It turns extremely rapidly and is self-cleaning. So it generates uh, a very, very fine, intimal mixing from a heterogeneous system. This means that the reaction occurs in a very, very fast way and there is like an, uh, an aircraft that means that the turbine keeps a working flow and is clean, is self-clean, because it creates the vacuum inside. 
then hydrodynamic cavitation is extremely useful then to treat your waste in a very, very efficient way, again, to reduce the POD, the COD, with a, a very little addition of some oxidant. Of the, of course, here just to show the combination of ultrasound and microwave, and the industry still also in, in discovery and the application micro reactor or maser reactor. Of course, again, a very high efficient system in which you can have all in all your mixing your system the 